In this video, we're going to go through the proof that f of x equals 1 over x is continuous for all positive values of x. Before we do the proof, let's go over how to figure out the proof, which is much more important uh, than the proof itself. So we need to show that for some x naught in this interval, so for any x naught, that for all epsilon greater than 0, we can find, so I'll just say we need a delta greater than 0, such that for all x in this interval here, whenever the distance between x and x naught is less than delta, the distance between f of x and f of x naught is less than epsilon. So for any x naught in this interval, and for all epsilon greater than 0, we actually have to find the delta such that whenever this distance is less than delta, uh, this distance here is less than epsilon. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Uh, f of x here is 1 over x, and f of x naught is 1 over x naught. And I'll go kind of fast because this is it's a tough problem. Uh, we can actually perform the subtraction here. So this will be x naught minus x over x x naught. And the reason is you can simply multiply this by x naught over x naught, and then you can multiply this by x over x and subtract. All right, we want this to be less than epsilon. Uh, we can go ahead and rearrange this as x minus x naught. And the reason we can do that is this here is the distance between x naught and x, right? This, this here. And this here is the distance between x and x naught. Those distances are the same, so you know, if you have the absolute value of a minus b, that's the absolute value of b minus a. And we can drop the absolute values in the denominator because both of these guys are positive numbers, right? They all live inside this interval here. All right, the problem here is that we want this to be less than epsilon. And there is an x here. So we need to somehow figure out how to bound 1 over x. This is the hardest part of the problem, I think. So let's draw a little picture. So here is 0, and here is x naught. So if we had x bigger than x naught, then we would have 1 over x less than 1 over x naught. But we can't quite get that, right? If x is over here, then we have this condition. But what if x is over here? Then this condition is not true. So that fails. But it should give us some intuition as to how to create an interval around x naught so that we can bound 1 over x. So let's try using x naught over 2. So we'll say that this distance here is x naught over 2. So if this distance is x naught over 2, if we add x naught over 2 to x naught, we get 3x naught over 2. And so this distance here is also x naught over 2. So why did I pick x naught over 2? Because now if x is any of these numbers here, x is bigger than x naught over 2. And using some algebra, and again, skipping some steps, this would mean that 1 over x is less than 2 over x naught. Okay, so we do have a bound on 1 over x, and this interval can be represented as follows. This is x minus x naught with absolute values less than x naught over 2. So I did that kind of fast, but again, the motivation is we want x bigger than x naught because then 1 over x is less than 1 over x naught. But we can't quite get that because x might be over here. So a solution is to try something like x naught over 2. Uh, likewise, we could have done x naught over 15. It doesn't really matter. The choice of 2 uh, was pretty arbitrary. So then if we have this to be our delta, then this will be less than x minus x naught. And then we can replace 1 over x with uh, right here, 2 over x naught. So this is 2 x naught and then x naught. So this is the 2 times the absolute value of x minus x naught, and this is x naught squared. And we want this to be less than epsilon, right? So uh, we can just simply multiply by the reciprocal of this. So we want x minus x naught to be less than, and then let's see, it would be x naught squared epsilon over 2. So we'll take our other delta. You might say two deltas. Yeah, we'll resolve it to be that. So we want delta to be that, and we want delta to be that. So what we'll do now is we'll go to the proof, finally, and we'll take delta to be the minimum of the two. So let's go ahead and do the proof. Let me switch to 
a different color. So proof. So to start the proof, we have to take any x naught in our interval. So we're pretty much going to do the same thing, just a little bit briefer. So take any x naught, and then we'll also have to let epsilon be greater than zero. So let epsilon be greater than zero. And now we have to find the delta. Well, everything we just spent so much work on was the finding of the delta. So choose delta to be the minimum of the two deltas that we needed. So one of them would be x naught over 2, and the other one was over here. It was uh, x naught squared epsilon over 2. Okay, then for all x in this interval with the distance between x and x naught less than delta, well, we could do a little more justification here. Up here I drew a picture and I said that 1 over x is less than 2 over x naught. We could justify that a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that first. So then, let's justify it uh, algebraically. x is equal to the absolute value of x, right? And what we can do now is we can add and subtract x naught. So this is x minus x naught plus x naught. And let's rearrange the terms. And the reason we'll do that is so we can use the triangle inequality. So this is x naught plus, and I'll put this in parentheses, x minus x naught. Okay, and using the reverse triangle inequality, this is the absolute value of x naught minus the absolute value of x minus x naught. Okay, and we can drop the absolute value from the x naught because it's positive, and this will be greater than x naught. And say, so how did you get the greater than? Well, we know that this is less than delta, so the opposite of this is greater than negative delta. And delta is less than or equal to this, right? Because delta is the minimum of both of these numbers. So this is greater than or equal to x naught minus x naught over 2. Beautiful stuff. And that's x naught over 2. Wow. So x is greater than x naught over 2. Then let's finally look at the difference um, f of x minus f of x naught. f of x minus f of x naught, well, f of x is 1 over x, right? And this is minus 1 over x naught. And I'll skip some steps here, but playing the same game we did up in the scratch work, this was x minus x naught over x x naught. And we know something. We know x is bigger than x naught over 2. And what does that mean? I probably should have said it. That means 1 over x is less than 2 over x naught. So this is less than to absolute value x minus x naught. And then we have x naught times x naught. So this is x naught squared. This piece here, this is less than delta. So this is less than 2 over x naught squared times delta. And delta is the minimum of both of these numbers. So this is less than or equal to 2 over x naught squared times x naught squared epsilon over 2. And everything cancels beautifully, and we get epsilon, and that completes the proof. So the hard part of, you know, these, these delta epsilon proofs is figuring this out. And, you know, if you look in a book, there's plenty of good books out there, but uh, most of them are pretty tough to read. And if you look in a book, they'll just, they'll do this, and they'll say, choose delta equal this. And it's like, well, how'd you get this? Well, they don't really tell you in the books. And I guess it's okay. I guess you're supposed to figure it out. Uh, but just to go over that part again up here, when we got to this step here, let me switch colors. This is this is where everyone gets stuck in the proof, right? You need, you need to figure out what to do with 1 over x. You want that to be less than 1 over x naught. That's the first choice for most people. And that means that um, x naught is less than x, or x is bigger than x naught, right? That's great, but that's not going to happen because what if x naught is over here? Rather, what if x is over here? So what you do is you draw a little picture and you say, okay, let's, let's make this x naught over 2. And when that happens, then you have x bigger than x naught over 2. And that implies that 1 over x is less than 2 over x naught. And the proof uh, works. You find a bound for 1 over x. So I hope that made some sense.